the payroll protection plan was set up to help people keep people on payroll, whether they were foundations, institutions, universities, for-profit, uh, smaller companies. Uh, and the effort was to make sure people didn't lose their jobs and go on unemployment. When the government runs a uh, road through your backyard, they don't just take it. Since they did the damage, uh, they, are, they there's, a, there's a takings question there. And so compensation is helpful and necessary. I think the Wall Street Journal did a very good job of pointing out that in these cases, it was the government that shut down businesses, damaged universities and other not-for-profits like the foundation. But you misspeak when you say the foundation takes political positions. It doesn't. It's a research foundation. Americans for Tax Reform, I, speaking for Americans for Tax Reform, take many positions and do politics. That is not something that had anything to do with the Paycheck uh, Protection Plan. The one was a foundation like a university very badly damaged this year by the shutdown and the economics. We didn't want to lay people off. And the, and the government program said, instead of putting them on unemployment, here's a loan if you keep everybody uh, employed, which we, we have been able to do. So I will fight for lower taxes and less spending, period. Uh, but certainly the foundation does not take political positions. It does research. Well, on the foundation website, there are lines like Obamacare has failed, a carbon tax will be an economic disaster, and you yourself are running it. So it doesn't seem that different. Well, the same, the Heritage Foundation or the Brookings Foundation put out papers. They don't lobby. Well, they'll do research or Harvard will put out, uh, have professors put out things that are policy, perhaps issues, but not lobbying. Um, and that's the distinction you make between a C3 and a C4. The Wall Street Journal did a good job in walking through that. So I think it's, you take a look at a program. If you wanted to move forward, uh, we did, certainly didn't oppose the protection of, and the, the compensation for a takings. That's perfectly reasonable for government to do. The COVID didn't shut down the government. The government decisions told people they couldn't fly planes and they couldn't do uh, other things and, and gather. Uh, when the government makes those decisions, as in a takings in the Constitution, it is required to cover for those costs. Perfectly reasonable position for somebody who's for limited government to take. I know some on the left have tried to act like it wasn't, but they missed the point of the Constitution, the takings clause, uh, and the importance of keeping people employed. What we could have done and what we would prefer to do, Americans for Tax Reform argued for, is reduce the, capital, the uh, tax on Social Security on the corporate side and the individual side so that it's less expensive to hire people in the first place and they get to keep more. It's both the incentive to get people into the workforce and the incentive for companies to hire more people or to keep people that they do have employed. Long term, we've done that in the past. I think it's a very good way to deal with uh, not having companies or institutions like a foundation or a research institution or a university to lay people off. They all pay Social Security taxes, both at the, the individual level uh, and at the institutional level. That, I think, is a better long-term way to do it. It's also not a new program, uh, and so the government does know how to do that uh, very easily. Uh, mm -hmm. But we've got now the most important thing to do going to keep people in jobs is to make it clear from now until the election that mm -hmm. we're not going to be raising taxes and we're not going to be doing anything that damages the economy. And that's why... It, you know, April, April 15th is now July 15th. And, and July that, 15th that, is but, when you have to file your taxes. That, that um, arguing for those changes in, in social security that you just outlined, you're doing that in your position as head of foundation or head of the lobby group? No, head of ATR. I speak on all political issues as, as head of Americans for Tax Reform. OK. It, it, we just, yeah. it is a bit confusing, I think. Uh, anyway, moving on, in terms of it, the bailout... It's not. The, lots of foundations do exactly the same thing. Well, but go ahead. I'm not, not saying that excuses it. It's still, it's still confusing yeah. for them as well. Lots of the same employees, lots of the same arguments across both websites. Anyway, go, going ahead, uh, stepping away from PPP specifically, yeah. what about the bailouts, for example, um, for the airlines? Do you find those unpalatable? Well... If an airline lost money because the government says you cannot fly, then, then it's, it's not a bailout, it's a compensation for a taken. If an airplane, air company, drives itself into bankruptcy, as they did in previous years with co uh, contracts they can't maintain or pricing structures they can't maintain, it's a bailout if the airline lost money. It's a taking if the government said you can't fly. 
and you cannot allow, you cannot have these people on the planes, uh, and you're going to be making less money because of a government edict. There's all the difference in the world between uh, rewarding failure, a bailout, and having the government step on your toe, and then they can't turn around and act like you stubbed your toe. You're making the argument, Grover, for taxation. I mean, it's important for the government to have this money from taxpayers to be able to help them if they can. Okay, yes, but this is, look, this is, I know, I get this all the time. You're not for higher taxes, therefore you're for no government. I'm sorry, but that's ludicrous. The federal government seizes in taxes, uh, you know, 20 plus percent of GDP and the state governments spend a whole bunch of it too. Um, when you're talking about the amount of money the government now has, does it need higher taxes? The argument from Americans for tax reform is no. The goal now should be to reform government. In fact, government as structured is too big, it's too inefficient. We should be reforming government, as Bill Clinton did, with aids to, aid to families with dependent children. He block granted it out to the 50 states. The cost dropped 10, 20, 30, 40 percent uh, as various states competitively tried to figure out how to help people at the lowest possible cost. The argument for limited government, which the Constitution requires, is not an argument for no government. I know the left likes to play that game, but they're being silly. And so the argument that we put forward is don't raise taxes, reform government. The only time we ever get any sort of government reform is when a state feels it can no longer tax because people are too angry at the high tax rates. Mm -hmm. California after Prop 13, Massachusetts after Prop two and a half, cities that have gone bankrupt by spending themselves bankrupt can actually reform at times through, through bankruptcy and others. The federal government, when uh, Obama wanted to take another $2 trillion in debt ceiling, beyond the debt ceiling, the Republicans said, we'll grant that to you if you take $2 trillion mm -hmm. in less spending over the next decade from what you were spending bring spending down, put a mm -hmm. limit on it. And the president agreed to that. And they've largely held the sequester. It has been very successful in keeping spending down. It took spending uh, from 25% of GDP down to 21% mm -hmm. uh, in a couple so, of years. So that was a dramatic drop in spending, but only because the Republicans in the House and Senate who'd taken the pledge that we share with people said, we're not raising taxes, we must reform government. Obama tried everything except that okay. and eventually had to agree to begin to reform spending.